Hi guys. So this is our um, second Muladhara um, chakra practice for uh, stability and grounding. Um, we're working on this because I, I think all of us <laughs> need a, a, a little more stabilizing at the moment as everything around us is uh, shifting and uncertain. Um, so we're going to start just here in, in Zakasana, uh, maybe use a, a, a block or a blanket for a little bit of support if you need that help aligning your, your pelvis. Make sure your pelvis is, is vertical and your spine can lengthen. Maybe close your eyes, that, that action of, of closing the eyes, it always helps us just to internalise, to bring the attention to the breath. Lower the chin a little bit. And just feel that you begin to take that journey inward. You begin to let go of your day. You can elongate your inhale. And elongate your exhale. Just take a few breaths here. Just to set the tone for your practice. To arrive on your mat and your body. When you feel that you're centered, just bring your hands together in front of your heart. And set your intention here for, for grounding, anchoring, putting down your roots. As you exhale, you feel the energy moving down the body and into the base. So ground, releasing your tension, your fears. When you feel that you're ready, transition over and onto your hands and knees so you come into tabletop pose. <clears throat> and align your spine here, spread out your fingers, turn your toes under, soften your elbows. And then slowly move through the spine into flexion. So you start with a, a posterior pelvic tilt, you draw the tail under. And you feel the connection um, to the very root here, to the pelvic floor as you tilt your pelvis, a contractive quality at the root. You open the lower back, middle back, upper back, bow down the head. You look inward towards your center. And you maybe just hold that flexion for a moment. Notice how your body responds to your breath, that the energy is rebounding from your hands, from your toes all the way through the structure of your body and then when you're ready you can move the other way so you start again at the pelvis your anterior till your pelvis so the sit bones lift you open through your navel space you open your heart space you widen your collarbones and you feel the way their energy rinses through the, the body as you breathe here and just do one more. So really slowly, tail under, lower back, middle back, upper back, bow down, look inward, press the toes, hands, feel the rebound of energy again, and then slowly extend, widen the collarbones, open the heart, Uh, from here, when you're ready, drop back towards your heels, come into child's pose and just put your forehead there on the, the floor, this close to the, the ground, we really feel the, 
the qualities of, of releasing, of, of letting go. Nice earthy, calm quality as you exhale very slowly. And again, you let go of the things that are on your mind, and your worries and your fears. We transition from here, we come up onto our hands and knees, we turn the toes under, really check the, the foundation in your, your hands, shift the weight back a little bit so you feel yourself coming into your toe roots and then rise into a downward facing dog. And just feel into all four corners of your, your dog, spread out your fingers, your toes, shift the weight a little bit if you find that, that helps and maybe pedal your your feet just very very slowly we're going to be working with the feet and the legs again to help increase the, the the receptivity in the legs to help connect us to our our roots our foundation so any movement that that helps you wake up your feet and legs is, is just fine. From here, when you're ready, slowly lower down. And this time, sit all the way back on your heels. So you come into Vajrasana. So the feet are in plantar flexion. A lot of us will tip the weight forward a little bit here so we're not quite over the, the feet. If you can, allow yourself to, to sit right over your feet so you align uh, through your feet, your pelvis, through your centre, your chest, your head aligns and you just take a breath or two here. Shift the weight a little bit. down through your tail and as you exhale now you can stay here for another breath or two or you can let the knees flow up and just open the the fronts of the ankles the feet a little bit more so seeing how that feels you can always put the knees back down again if it feels too much and if you feel that you can just catch your balance here for a moment And then slowly we go the other way. So we come up onto our knees, we tuck the toes under, and we sit back towards the heels. So toes right under, you feel the toe roots into the floor and you sit back towards your heels. And again, um, we maybe shift the weight forward a little bit just to, to reduce the intensity of the posture. And that's okay if you need to do it, but recognize if the weight is slightly forward. And if it feels okay for you, just come all the way up and you align right over your toe roots. And again, you drop the weight, release the weight down through your, your tail. So there's a really nice stretch here and there in the soles of the, the feet. Long inhale. And a long exhale. If it feels okay, come over and into Malasana from here. So, all the way. If you need support, and we um, looked at this posture last night in the, the first Muladhara chakra practice. If you need support, you can put a, a block or a blanket, some support underneath your heels. If your heels drop all the way down, it's fine. And you can just come into Malasana for a moment or two. So there's a nice opening through the, the backs of the ankles, through the Achilles. Maybe shift the weight a little bit side to side. Take a breath. And then maybe place the, the fingertips on the floor and see if you can find a little toe raise here. So you bring yourself up. 
into your toes. And maybe again, we can just find a moment's balance there. A little bit tricky. We come slowly down. Drop the heels. And then bring yourself all the way up and into Uttanasana. So the hips lift. You find a <coughs> parallel alignment with your feet. And you drop down the head. Shift the weight a little bit side to side. And shrug the shoulders. And you just take a, a moment or two here in your Uttanasana to release your, your tension. Soften the knees, feel the spine decompress. Maybe sigh away the breath. You might want to give the head just a little nod or turn from side to side until you feel space around the base of your skull. From here, uh, walk forward, come into downward facing dog again. Just slow handprints coming forward. Finding that position again, making sure you're not locking your elbows. Big exhale down into all four corners. And then coming up onto your toe root, so you lift the heels. You stretch the feet again. On your next exhale, bend your knees and squat your dog. So you feel the hinging in your, your toes as you lower almost to the floor. And then come all the way back up, lift your sit bones. Lift as high onto your toes as you can. And then try and keep your sit bones lifted as you reach down through your heels. If it's possible, as you lower your heels, draw your toes up so you're looking underneath your toes towards the, the transverse arches. And then spread the toes down and feel that lovely connection through your feet. When you're ready, uh, footprints, footsteps, bring you forward, nice and slow again. And we come back into Uttanasana. Now you might want to lift and lengthen, so you draw your heart forward. Create a little bit of space and then exhale back into the fold. And again, just feeling that you, you release here, you give to gravity. If you can, bring your fingertips just a few inches in front of your feet. And then climb up onto your toe roots again. You can take a squat again, and it can be a, a part way, a partial squat, where you just balance on your toes, or you can come further in a fuller version of a, a toe squat, or even maybe a toe balance. And then slowly we lift the hips again. We reach down through the heels. Again, if it's possible, just rock back a little bit onto the heels, lift the toes, and then spread the toes down. To rise, we press down into the feet. We want to feel the rebound energy again. So 
before you start to come up. Really root into the feet and feel the way the energy rebounds through your legs, through your, your femurs, how your femurs really install in your pelvis. You feel that if you press your outer heels, that the femurs kind of widen. So you feel this connection you know, between your, your feet and your thighs and your sit bones, energy coming up into your pelvis. And then you come up on that energy, on that rebound energy, coming up through your legs, into your pelvis, going up through your lower back, through your middle back, through your upper back, and all the way to stand in Tadasana. Just take a, a, a second there in Tadasana and notice how it feels if you feel that your, your feet were a little more receptive, you feel more connected through your, your feet and your legs. If you can um, if you can hear, feel the conversation between your, your feet and your center of gravity clearly, close your eyes for a moment. You can bring your hands in front of your heart and toe raise again. See if you can find your balance all the way up and on your toes. Lower down slowly. And again, just spread out your toes and connect down into all four corners of each foot. From here, we inhale and come slowly up. And we exhale as we draw down. Inhale and lift your heart, bring your breastbone forward. And exhale as you step your left leg back, we want the right foot forward. So you bring yourself into a lunge and just wiggle out so you find your, your longest lunge. And um, maybe square back the right hip a little bit so you feel that your pelvis is aligned. You reach back through your left heel, forward through your heart. And take a breath or two. Really anchor into your, your posture, draw your belly back towards your spine so you're not really collapsing into your front thigh, but you're nice and stable. And then maybe take the hands away from the floor and just check in with the stability through your feet and your legs. Take another breath. Maybe one more. Nice strong legs and then Place the fingertips down, stand in to your right foot, float your left foot forward, lift your heart again, lengthen, and exhale down and into your fold. Coming up slowly, you restart. All the way up. back into Tadasana and take a breath. Now we want to stand on the right foot. We're going to take the, the left foot off the floor. You can stay on the front edge of your mat, but I'm going to shift so you can see what I'm doing. So you're standing on your right foot and you find your, your Tadasana alignment. So the tail is drawn down, the, the pulse aligns, the belly draws in. You find your right foot, and maybe soften your right knee. You don't want to lock your knee. And then you come onto your right foot. You lift your, your left foot off the floor. And you want to keep your, your gaze nice and steady here. So try not to let your, 
your eyes move around the room, you fix your gaze on a still point in front of you, keep your gaze there. You can stay here, simple balance, or you can open your left hip and bring the sole of your left foot to your inner right thigh, so you come into Vuxasana. Now if you're coming into this posture, you need to press your left foot towards your inner right thigh and your right thigh back towards your left foot. So the energy really presses in towards the center, towards the midline, and then the energy should rebound through the center of the posture. And bring your hands in front of your heart. release down when you're ready and take a moment just to notice how the the feet feel how the two halves of your body feel if you feel a little more receptive through that right side and then we're going to do the other side so from Tadasana again from the edge of your mat your hands in front of your heart Regulate your breath and then inhale and come all the way up. Exhale, slowly down. Inhale up your heart. And then exhale the right leg back so you have your left foot forward. Nice long lunge, so maybe wiggle out a little bit longer if you can. You want to feel that your hips are a bit lower than your shoulders. Strong line of energy through your back leg, so really extend out into your right heel, draw your breastbone forward, try and lengthen. Make sure you're not collapsing into your front thigh. Nice clear energy through your posture and then maybe you take your fingertips off the floor if you can. And it's okay if you're um, a little bit wobbly here. Um, that action of, of slightly moving, of stabilizing and rebalancing, it helps to strengthen your, your foot, your ankle. One more breath. When you're ready, your fingertips come down, you stand into your left foot and you flow your right foot forward. You lift your heart, lengthen again. Exhale into the fold. Good. When you're ready, make sure you soften your knees, you press your feet. And roll up, we start. Notice how it feels. So just taking a, a pause to recognize what you're establishing, it's really important. So you feel into your feet for a, a second or two. And then when you're ready, this time you stand on your left foot. You bring your right foot off the floor. If you need to keep it real close to the floor, that's okay. You can bring it a little bit further up, that's okay as well. Maybe bring the knee in front of the hip. Make sure you're not locking that left leg, you want some space in the joint. Try and keep the, the big toe root of your left foot anchoring down. And then if you feel you want to take this into Buxas or into tree pose, you bring your right foot to your inner left thigh press the foot to the thigh and the thigh back towards the foot and as you do so you feel the energy moving all the way up through the center of the body the tail draws down fix the gaze hands maybe in front of your heart
Again, if you're a little bit wobbly, it all helps to strengthen the, the foot, the ankle, the arches of your foot. So when you're ready, you can stand down. And again, you just take a moment to notice how your, your feet feel, that deepening connection. And then from Tadasana again. When you're ready, you inhale and you come slowly up. Exhale and fold. Releasing your, your spine. Inhale, lift your heart. And exhale, plant your hands. Soften the knees a little bit, move back into downward facing. Right leg leads. Find all four corners of your dog, spread your fingers again, soften your elbows. The head drop down. This clear, even breath. You can bring your left foot a little close to your right foot, a little close to the midline. And then slowly the right leg ascends. Now try and lift through your right heel. Come up slowly. Try and keep the weight very even into the other three limbs. And then slowly bring the right foot through for a warrior pose. Now you're going to climb up onto your left toes to give you lots of clearance. You bring the right knee in towards your centre and you place your right foot lightly for your warrior pose. Okay, so don't throw your foot forward. We don't want to hear a thud as the foot lands. You turn your left toes out a few degrees and you square your right hip back. So again, we looked at this posture last night. Strong line of energy through your left leg and into your left heel. And just check again. You press into your feet, come up. Again, you just check your alignment, you square your hips, pull the tail down. You maybe close your eyes for a moment or two. And again, the communication between your feet and your centre should be clear. Okay, bring your hands in front of your heart. We're going to shift the weight today onto the front foot. And maybe we can press into the front foot and take the back foot off the floor. And try and find a connection all the way through from left heel to base of skull. And then maybe if you feel you have your balance, you can come just a, a little more horizontal, parallel to the floor. And we're all just a little bit wobbly at the moment. When you're ready, you can step back to Tadasana. And again, you just feel the effects of the work in your feet and your legs. And then we 
do the other side. So we inhale, come up. And exhale, pull forward. Inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, find the foundation underneath your hands, left leg leads, down the top. Find all four corners. Nice clear exhale. Brings you into your roots. You might want to adjust the right foot and then the left leg rises. Slowly. Try not to turn the toes out and spin the pelvis, but keep the alignment as you come up. You lift into your left heel. You feel the connection between the, the left hand, the heel of the left hand, and the heel of the left foot. That strong line of energy all the way through your body. Try not to overextend your right knee. Belly draws back towards your spine. You climb up onto the right toes and you draw the left leg through and you place slowly and quietly. You turn your right toes out. Remind yourself that there's no hurry. Square your left hip back. Connect down through your feet with an exhale. Maybe take your right hand away from the floor. And then again, as you exhale, you come a little bit more into your feet. You send the energy down and it rebounds up. So the transition up into Virabhadrasana is really smooth. Close the eyes for a moment. So the feet can really speak to your centre. Hands come in front of your heart when you're ready. And we just build on the work we did yesterday by shifting the weight onto the front foot. Slowly, right foot comes off the floor. You might want to keep it here. As I said, we all feel maybe a little bit more wobbly than we usually would. So much uncertainty at the moment. So modify the posture if you need to. Make sure you're not striving. If you feel but it's okay for you to go a little bit further. You're connecting your right heel all the way through to the base of your skull. Good. When it feels like enough, nice slow transition brings you back to Tadasana if you can. Big exhale down into the feet. And you just stand in your body for a moment or two. And hopefully we feel that we're more anchored, more connected to the ground. The roots are a little bit stronger. Steady your breath. Inhale slowly and come up. Exhale slowly down. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale again, find the hands, bend the knees a little bit, really put the weight into the hands so you feel that clear connection, strong foundation, and then 
shift back into downward dog. Good. Take a breath here and as you exhale, send the energy down to all four corners. And then coming through and into a plank pose, if you can, for a moment. Now, I know I've got two or three pregnant students that are following, so you guys maybe come to tabletop pose, come to your hands and knees instead of plank pose. Lower down when you're ready. All the way down, apart from those girls that are pregnant. We'll reach the legs back. So if you're in tabletop pose, just a little spinal extension from, from tabletop pose. So you're not coming all the way down to prone. If you're prone here, elbows are in, legs are reaching back, pressing down, and you're taking just a really light cobra. So we, we don't want to push into the hands and, and, and shove ourselves up and bring tension into the shoulders or stress into the back. Nice and easy. Not too far. You maybe take your hands away from the floor for a moment and just check in that you're just waking up the strength in your back. And then for all of us from here, we can just come back into child's pose. So you sit back on your heels, nice and slow. Sit back, reach forward. So there's lengthening as you come into child's pose, as you come into balasana, and shift the weight a little bit side to side. Forehead comes to the floor, elbows relax down. You take one or two breaths here. Again, while you're in child's pose, you can give away anything that is on your mind, any restlessness, any, any worry. See if you can kind of rinse it away with the exhale. And if you did the, the very first practice with me, the let go practice, we were focusing on those long, really long, slow exhales through pursed lips in that practice. You could do that here as well. It really helps to um, release the, 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 the pressure. It helps to rinse away our, our stress and our tension. Good. And then from your child's pose, when you're ready, you can bring yourself up and over. We're gonna come onto the seat we're going to take the, the legs out wide for today. So uh, um, Upavishta, Kanasana variation. And um, sit yourself tall here. So you lengthen your, your spine. You drop down into the, the backs of your legs. You can take a little bit of support through your hands, wherever, wherever it feels comfortable. Now, if you're pelvis is, is falling back, if your pelvis is in posterior tilt, so you're rounding your back and you know that from here there's no way forward, you can use a, a block just under the very back of your seat to give you a little bit of anterior tilt. Sometimes that can be really helpful. The toes look straight up, backs of the knees drop down. Chin draws in a little bit. Now you can stay here, this is absolutely fine. If you feel that you have the space to come forward, lengthen forward with your, with your heart, you press down into the, the backs of the legs, widen the sit bones and come forward. That's very, very slowly. Notice any tendency that you have to turn your, your toes in or to turn your toes out. Try and keep the toes looking straight up if you can. And just come into what is for you a comfortable version of um, Upavishta Kanasana.
So again, be really sure that you're not forcing or striving. Reach out through your heels, press down into the backs of your legs. Try and send your heart a little bit further forward. So it, it, it's not just about getting your head to the floor. Okay, if that's your um, your purpose here, you're very likely to, to kind of round your back and bunch up your posture. Keep the heart moving forward. Keep that energy moving forward. We'll take a breath or two here again. When you feel that you're ready to come up, press into the, the foundation. You can certainly use your, your hands to, to help you a little bit, but feel also that you're using your legs and the energy once again rises. Way up. Then just drop down into your base again. Notice how it feels. We'll bring ourselves onto our backs, so a semi supine position. Notice how it feels here. Again, let the, the feet open and spread. We'll keep the, the back bend uh, relatively simple. Maybe if you have a block, just bring that block in between the, the knees and, and squeeze in. So it will be on the, the middle setting that you squeeze the block. And it maybe just helps us to um, keep the, the knees aligned and it helps us to stay in the big toe root rather than tip onto the outer edges of the feet. So let's just hug the block with the, the inner thighs and then press down into the feet. And the first thing you should feel is slight posterior tilt in the pelvis. And then as you keep pressing, the pelvis lifts. You peel up away from the floor. So lower back, middle back. Maybe you can lift slightly into your upper back. So as if you're lifting behind your heart. You bring yourself into just a, an easy version of Setu Bandhasana. You, you know if you start to, to force or strive here, if you start to really uh, grip behind your hips, if you start to bring tension into your shoulders, if you start to strive, you're gonna uproot all that lovely energy that you've just brought down and into the ground in the rest of your practice. So nice and easy. Open your belly space, keep hugging to your block. And just take another breath or two here. And then slowly coming down through upper back. Middle back, lower back, 
and then releasing the sacrum down, letting go of the, the tension, the effort from the mid glutes, the hip extensors, and take the block away. And take a moment again here just to, to feel the, the residue of that posture, that heaviness in your, in your pelvis, Long exhale. And then bring your right leg in. Let's uh, make it be our last posture before we relax. So the right knee comes in. Now, if you want to keep it really simple, you can just be here, uh, single leg up and asana. Alternatively, you can bring the, the leg into a half stirrup pose, so that's here. Um, you don't have to hold the foot, you can hold behind the knee or um, you can hold the, the calf or the ankle. I think we did this posture, um, maybe the first practice, the let go practice. Um, the left leg can stay bent or as long as it's easy for you, you can put that leg all the way down. What we don't really want to do is compromise what's happening with this leg by putting this leg down. So if as you straighten this leg, this one starts to move away from you, maybe it's counterproductive to, to, to straighten your, your left leg. So find a, a version that's good for you. I'm gonna stay in the easy version. Uh, drop down into your right shoulder. Keep the neck nice and long. Remind yourself that you should um, Stay away from too much intensity in your practice at the moment. Um, keep it towards the lighter side. Make your, your focus just about your grounding, your centering, rather than about achievement or ambition or any of the other silly things. I'll take one more breath here. If you chose to straighten your left leg, you can bend it again before you release your right leg. And then slowly, you put your right foot down. And again here, that there should be an interesting um, comparison between your, your two sides. Notice the way the energy is in that right side, how the right side feels. And then just same posture to the other side. So you know you can stay here or you can come into half stirrup pose. You know you can straighten your right leg for maybe a, a deeper opening, but be sure it's not too intense. You can always back up again to the easier version. If it's not comfortable holding the foot, you hold the back of the thigh, try and release both shoulder blades down. And take breath all the way down towards your pelvic space, towards your hips. Long inhale. Long And then when it's enough, you release again. And back down. You might want to give the, the knees 
Just a, an easy rock here. Imagine as you rock your, your legs that you're just settling your, your, your sacrum a little bit more into the ground. You might just want to hug your knees in one last time. Um, it doesn't have to be too, um, too hard. Just a, a gentle, okay, a reassuring hug. And then in your own time, you can find your way down and into your relaxation. So you may, you may want to straighten your legs all the way down. But if that doesn't feel good on your, your lower back, you can keep your knees um, bent, or you can lay your legs over some support like a, a, a bolster or even uh, one or two blocks just here, just under the backs of your thighs. Sometimes that makes it a little bit easier on the, on the lower back. So you choose your, your place. Take your elbows a little bit wide and your, your side ribs and either you can drop the arms down with the palms up or you can turn in and just rest your, your hands on your abdomen. Be sure that the back of your neck is nice and long. Take a, a big inhalation here and hold it in for a second or two so you just retain that, that space, that expansion for a moment or two and then open the mouth a little bit and sigh the, the breath away. Long, slow sigh. And you just feel the, the body drop a little bit more. You feel the body let go, release, soften. And you can do that maybe once or twice and um, take long, inhales, retain them for a moment or two, and then exhale really slowly so that you drop your, your tension, so that you release a little bit more completely. And just notice how you're feeling, if you feel a little bit more grounded more centered. <clears throat> These practices um, for Muladhara, they should help us to feel um, a little bit safer, um, more secure, more stable. We learn that through the exhale we can let go of some of the things that are uprooting us, maybe some of the, the worry, some of the stress. And just continue to observe your breathing as you sink deeper into your relaxation. And I'll suggest that you stay here for a few minutes, that you give yourself time to, to fully relax. That you give your, your nervous system some time to, to reset, to, slide towards your relaxation responses. So I'm going to leave you here. To enjoy just a little bit of quiet space.